Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. Hey guys, and welcome to today's episode. Um, I thought, well, it's been a while since I've been in a thrift store, mainly because I've been donating to thrift stores like crazy and I've had no need to buy anything for myself. But usually when I do a drop off, I stop in and we do a little video and see if there's anything cool inside. So welcome to today's episode of Antique Store Dealer versus Thrift Store. And today I've got my daughter with me, Abigail. So we'll both be cruising around to see if there's anything cool that maybe is undervalued or perhaps just darn nifty for us to either pick up or at very least show you guys. So let's go check out a local shop, see what there is to see. Today's thrift store that Abigail and I are going to is the Salvation Army Thrift Store on 111th Avenue in West Edmonton. My dad, Don, and I used to come here and look for records, and today it's myself and my daughter looking for treasures. Sometimes thrift stores get things that are a little bit better and they put them behind glass. I don't know where they figure out the prices. They probably look online, but we've got a Laurel and Hardy telephone booth sign, but they price it at $329. At that, there's really not much room for margin. Um, we've got a replica sword, Star Wars guy. What caught my eye was this Lincoln hydraulic truck. That is a good piece, but they have it basically at full retail at uh, just over $200. Ah, oh, darn, I would have bought that in a jiffy. If that was like 25 bucks or something, or even 50 bucks, I would have been a, a buyer on that. Uh, press steel toys like this, Lincoln, Structo, all from the 40s and 50s. Very collectible, very desirable. And that's a very specific price, $221.99. Don't forget that extra 99 cents. That's gonna make all the difference. There are loads of dishes, sometimes old, sometimes new. Occasionally these little baggies have treasures inside. That's where you might be able to find like a valuable toy car or something that people often overlook toys. Um, I started off collecting toys when I was a kid, so I always look for those. Decorative sort of containers. I'm not really seeing anything too antique yet. So Abigail, you're gonna have to tell me if you see anything cool too. All right. We'll keep our eyes out together to see if there's anything neat. But so far, it just looks like a bunch of assorted glassware. Oh, look at this piggy bank with the octopus on its head. Odd, and it's got the Detroit Red Wings logo on it. Don't know what that's all about. <laughs> Some of these are Red Wings fans will be like, oh yeah, we throw an octopus on the ice. Actually, I think they do. It probably has something to do with that. Maybe I should watch more hockey and then I would know. Do you know what this is, honey? Nope. It, I'll give you a hint. The Spinwell Manufacturing Company. What do you think they do with it? Spin it. Yeah, it's a spinning wheel. You put your foot on here. And that gets the spinning at the top here. And then you, uh, we went, remember the Weaver's house that we did, it was just full of nothing but spinning wheels and looms and things. Well, that's kind of neat. Let's see. Chia zombie. <laughs> I guess you, if you want to have a zombie that has an afro, it's like a disco zombie. Like, hey, disco zombie says, <laughs> feed my head water and chia food. That's random. They had a Bob Ross like this too, which was awesome because Bob Ross had a big afro. It was amazing. If it was a Bob Ross one, I'd probably pick it up. Little baskets and things. Hmm. Okay, next aisle. I guess that's the nice thing about a thrift store is that you never know when you're gonna find something that was overlooked. This little carved wooden statue I mean, somebody put some effort into that. I mean, for $5, it's pretty inexpensive. Nothing I really feel the need to buy right now myself. If you're a musician though, I think this is cool, honey. If you had two of those, it'd be a neat little bookends, but that's just a little ornament. That's kind of neat. Are those Yorkies? I think that's little Yorkies. What if we found one that looked exactly like Chewy? Would we buy it? Yeah. That's carved. That's actually carved out of a piece of wood. Fairly intricate. I always remind, reminds me of 
actually when i was at my friend bill's place german bill and his basement is like perfectly preserved from the 1970s he had all sorts of german stuff like this lying around i don't know that that's german but they do like their carved wood somebody spent a long time on that it doesn't have a price on it though let's see what's down this way I always try and pay attention to the ornaments, the sculptures, the statues. I've been places before and they've had uh, Art Nouveau bronze statues and they put them out for a couple dollars because they don't know what they are. But don't see any of those here today. Let's look at the back. And yes, you can even buy old appliances. $14.99, what a crock. Okay, nice old leather suitcase for about $20. I get that. What I don't get, is a Smith Corona typewriter for 176. We sell typewriters like this at our store for probably $50 or so. That it's a neat piece, but it's a little high. The horse is kind of cool. $12.99. They used to make these out of leather as well. I don't know what this is. Actually, this might be a leather horse. I think it is. For $12, that might be worth saving and bringing back to the shop. Just as a little ornament. It's got kind of a neat look to it. Okay, now here we go. Ha, huh, funny little coffee cup of the two hockey guys fighting. That's not what I'm looking at though. What I'm looking at are the Hot Wheels. Now, these are what they call black walls. Black walls came right after red lines. In fact, I think this Larry's towing truck also came in a red line. Um, Larry it was the designer of many of the Hot Wheels and they called this Larry's towing as sort of a homage to him, a tip of the hat, you might say. So these are somewhat collectible. They're probably worth maybe five dollars each in this shape. Two ninety nine. That's only two. That's, there's profit, but it's only a couple dollars profit. So might leave those here where they are. But where there's uh, some, there might be others. So we'll keep looking around. Of all the things that they've priced, this one is thirty four ninety nine. It would have had a little uh, ornamentation on top that's missing. But that's a nice mantle clock. It's wind up manual. I believe it's made by Sessions, probably from the 1960s or 70s. Um, retail on that could be around $120 or so. $34.99, that is a little undervalued, assuming that it works, but they might not have a key for it. That would have some good value right there too. Now this is what my dad and I used to come here for. So I used to come here with Grandpa Don, Abigail, and we would look through the records. And one time I said, hey dad, there's a Ray Charles album here. It was right here at this store. And he said, nah, it's okay, I don't need it. I said, yeah, but it's autographed by Ray Charles. He's like, oh, okay, I'll take that. So he bought it. It was, I think, a dollar or two. It was a good deal. Most of the times what turns up at these places is music that is either overproduced or not really in the mainstream right now. So it's very hard to find. Like, you don't usually find a whole bunch of Led Zeppelin or stuff that actually sells really well in here or Beatles or things like that. It's always like Robert Goulet or Nana Muscuri. Jim neighbors <laughs> and they can stay exactly where they are right on that shelf I also look for electronics like good 1960s or 70s amplifiers you might be able to find a tube amp on occasion there is a turntable here but it's missing the the end off of it it's a modern turntable so who knows it looks like it's in terrible shape not worth picking up but if there was a good amplifier or something for the stereo system those are very collectible and people still need them Probably the best thing here in my mind, or the coolest thing is this vintage solid state Sony radio. Price tag of $10, not a bad deal. Sometimes you can also find original art, like that is a zebra, not badly done, $24. So if a person really liked that aesthetic, you can get a nice painting, it probably cost more than that, definitely cost more than that for the canvas, the paint materials and the time. Hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of effort into that, you know, and here it is at the thrift store. Um, or there's little funny prints, my dad would have appreciated that he was a big three stooge fan let's see what else there is oh look there's an antique trunk 70 bucks boy i just sold a couple like that at auction i think i only got 30 40 dollars each if they're, they're getting better prices out of their antiques here than i am at my place or at least they're trying to one thing that often gets overlooked are vintage 10 speeds like this. They're very collectible. This one has a little kid bucket on the back there. Um, you can find them at yard sales for like 10, 20, 30 dollars. 
But look, they've got 250 on it here. They'll probably get it. Um, they're very much in demand with the younger, sort of like 20 year olds. And I know even our employee, Sean, who's in that age range, was looking for one for a while. We found him one at the last house we cleared out and we gave it to him. So um, there is demand for them. But uh, yeah, old 10 speeds and BMXs, both very collectible. Of course, the main thing that most thrift stores sell is clothing racks and racks and racks of clothing it's their number one part of their business people donate it by the bag full and they have no issue selling it now a smart shopper would look through and look for old band or concert shirts certain shirts with advertising on them from a concert let's say can be worth hundreds or even thousands of dollars and those are very often overlooked at a thrift shop one other thing I like to do is I like to come and look at the bags of watches. In fact, I'm going to ask to have a look at this one because I see there's a 1950s Timex in there. And if it's an automatic uh, and they only have $18 on the bag, it'll be worth picking up. So I'm going to ask them to bring all the watches out for me to look at and see if I can find a treasure in there. Okay, well, what did I buy? Although there was a few things that were kind of interesting in the store, I ended up getting a bag of watches. Why did I get this bag of watches, you might ask? It's not like there's anything super crazy expensive in there, but there were a couple vintage mechanical watches um, that made the bag worthwhile. The cost of the bag was $18, and um, I'll show you the two watches that I wanted. Okay, there was three watches that were worth picking up, in fact. I didn't realize this other one was in the bag too, but um, the main one I wanted was this Timex manual wind men's wristwatch. What's more special about this is that uh, it's 1950s. It's actually in really good shape. It's in very good condition overall. 50s or 60s, uh, maybe more 1960s from the looks of things. But it is a wind-up watch and it has the day and date. Those are two little extra features that you didn't see on a lot of other watches. Uh, and that was a kind of a fancier feature for Timex at the time. So it would have been a little bit more expensive. This watch would retail after it's all cleaned up and after I make sure it's uh, working properly, probably about 60 to $75. So that's not a bad return on investment. These other two, the ladies cocktail watch, um, and I'm not sure the, the brand of this one, it looks like maybe a Weiler. If cleaned up, you know, it could bring about $40, $50 each. So um, well over $100 profit out of that bag. And uh, I actually quite like watches. So for me, they don't take up much room and I have people that buy them all the time. The rest of the stuff, well, it can go right back to charity. But I did end up getting a few little gems. So that's it, a fun day out with my daughter and found some cool stuff. And I got to spend some time with you, right, kiddo? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to tune in again for more episodes, and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now.